This segment is all about knives. You'll want to stick around. Welcome back to Outdoor Skills Made Easy. Today we're going to be talking about knives. And as you can see here on the table, I've got a set of knives or a collection of knives that I've accumulated over the years. Some of them are just throw in the drawer knives that someone gives to you and others are very special. Let me show you a few. This is a Cub Scout knife that I got, 1965, vintage four blade knife that uh, I don't use anymore, but I keep it around because it has special memories. And then following my Cub Scouts, we went into Boy Scouts and here's my Boy Scout knife that I carried in my pocket for a lot of years. This is a knife that was given to me as a recognition. Not really utilitarian, but it does say Time spent teaching a boy is not deducted from a man's life. I like that. I keep that on my shelf. Then finally, here's a great little set of knives. They're not any particularly important to anyone else other than me because they belong to my dad. And each of these knives hung on his belt or in his pocket at some time. I miss him, but I treasure the collection of knives that I have. A couple of more knives that I got from my grandparents when they returned from visiting family in Finland. So this is a couple of knives that have some caribou hide on there and I love that knife so I've kept those knives around for a lot of years. This is an interesting tool. It's a knife from my river guide years and it's made to not poke anyone but you can see the blades inside are very sharp. So if there's an incident where I needed to cut a rope quickly, that I could just hook it and slice through. Very effective. There's a great debate going on between those that love fixed blade knives and those that love folding knives. And I've had both during my time and I've enjoyed them both. Some of the benefits of having a fixed blade knife is generally they're a little heavier. Uh, they can take a beating a little bit more no moving parts. And so if you get a knife that has a great metal and will hold a blade, a fixed blade knife is an important tool in the out of doors. This is my current knife of choice. It's a buck knife. It holds a great sharp edge on the blade and it has a non-slip handle. It's got a locking mechanism so we can fold it back up. I keep it on my belt and it's easily accessible. So the things that I'm doing now, my camping and hunting, this is the perfect knife for me. Whether you have a folding blade knife or a fixed blade knife, safety is always important. So with a sheath knife, always make sure that it's covered and properly cared for. With a folding knife, make sure that the knife that you choose has a locking mechanism on the blade. If it doesn't, it's easily folded up on your fingers and that's when we're needing to reach for the first aid kit. So this buck knife has a little mechanism right here, a little pressure inward, and you can start closing it. And then the proper way to handle it to close the knife is grab the back of the blade and the body of the knife and fold it together. Always making sure that your fingers aren't in between. Here's a Kershaw knife that I enjoy it's got a little mechanism at the back that I can press and it's spring loaded. So as I press that, the spring helps the blade come out. Very sharp, very nice durable blade. And it also has a locking mechanism on the inside here. A little push to the outside, releases the lock and you can safely close the blade. Another tip about safety is if someone else needs your knife, you want to close it up and as you hand it to them, they'll take the other end of the knife and they will say to you, thank you. That indicates that they have the knife and you can release it to them. If you have a fixed blade knife, of course you're not going to put it back in the sheath to hand it to them. So you want to hold the back of the blade and hand it to them so that they can grip the handle. And then the same rule applies. When they say thank you, you can release the grip and they have the knife safely. 
I believe that every youngster should learn knife safety and etiquette when they're young. And then when they get their own knife, they'll know how to handle it properly. So let's take some time to train our children how to deal with and handle knives correctly. In addition to the safety rules that we've talked about, remember that a safe knife is a sharp knife. Once it gets dull, you may have to push a little harder to cut through whatever you're cutting, and all of a sudden it'll release and you'll cut a finger or it'll get into a, a, a leg or you know, it's just very dangerous. So we're gonna talk about some of the devices that are available commercially to sharpen your knife. Here's a commercial product that you can find that we use in our kitchen. It's made by Smith's. It has a couple of blades of carbide in between that are supposed to give you the correct groove in your knife. So the correct angle of the blade. You can go from coarse to fine. Let me show you how this works. So we're going to use our Kershaw knife. Remember it's got a spring that I can activate with my finger here. We'll put the sharpening device down here. A couple of strokes with the coarse blade and then go to a finer cut and those carbide rods in there will sharpen that to a nice sharp edge. Let me show you another device. This is also Smith's. It has carbide and then on this side we've got ceramic edges and they're both cut so it's supposed to be the perfect edge to sharpen your knife. Same method, hold it still and steady, draw nice and slow across the edges, turn it over, give it a few strokes, and that will produce a beautiful sharp edge for you. If your knife has been worked hard, then you may have some flat spots who will need some additional attention. Here's a device that has a hand protection here and it's got some metal rods and it's the same method. It's designed to flex as you put the knife through and that's supposed to give you also the perfect edge. Let's put away the Kershaw knife. We're gonna undo the lock fold it together and now I want to sharpen up my buck knife. It's got a little thumb knob there that I can flip that open very nicely and to use the sharpening stones and we've got another device here that I'll show you that we just want to have a little extra, extra protection as we use it. This is called an Easy Lap Diamond Sharpening Hone. And so I haven't got a protective edge here. So I put my gloves on and I'm just gonna draw the knife the length of the blade, trying to maintain the same angle you wanna go, don't wanna do this. Maintain the same angle forward and back, nice and smooth. as many strokes as you need. Don't get carried away and think that you need to do this fast like a professional chef. Let's go nice and slow and safe. And that will give you a great edge. So this is a wonderful tool to have also. We put that away. I've got two different types of sharpening stones. This is small. This is, of course, larger, and it's got two different types of grit, a rougher grit and a finer grit. So we use the larger stone because it's a little easier to watch. And if you're using a stone, you'll want to start with a little oil. Just put it along the surface there, and that's going to help us as we work our knife. Now keep your fingers below the line here. Work it the length of the, of the blade. Making sure that you continue clear to the tip. You notice as I'm 
cleaning that off, I'm pulling away from the cutting edge of the blade. Now we're going to turn it over and use the finer edge to put a finer edge on the, on the knife. Okay, let's see how we've done. Remember, lay it on there, pull away from the edge, away from the edge. And a lot of times you can look right down the edge of the knife and you won't see any type of a reflection or a flat edge on the blade. That'll indicate a sharp knife. And finally, one of the very fun knives that I enjoy is a Nulu knife that we picked up in Alaska. And I love this because it's easy to use for cutting and chopping and preparing meals. We've used that in another video, and I would encourage you to find one and use it. We hope these tips have been helpful to you, and hope that you'll join us again at OSME TV.